hello model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rael. And this week's build, I'm going to feature a Corvette ZR1 convertible. Now this is a C6 version here. And the ZR1 option package has been on and off the Corvette books uh, a number of years. And uh, it's, it's an interesting package that's been kind of all over the place. But it's always meant to be a really racing package top of the line kind of thing but it was in different formulas and in, in different uh, configurations and kind of a storied one too so it's kind of fun to research and look into it but when this car came out I just thought it was uh, awesome just the way it was built and, and stood out the, the nameplate to me is, is still pretty cool it goes pretty far back and it was kind of a somewhat unknown package when it uh, came out it actually debuted in 1970 the ZR1 package and it was actually replacing the L88 package, which that's a 427 that was a bad boy that came out in 67. But that was a top of the line 427, aluminum headed, iron blocked, pretty much a racing package. It wasn't really just the engine. The L88 package was, was more than that. It was a 427, 430 horsepower. But there were a few things that were done to the car as well. Like when you got the L88 package, you didn't get a radio. Uh, it was meant to be a racing package, and it was very rare when it first came out uh, in 67, 68, and 69, and kind of a, you know, an interesting package as well, but it was replaced by the ZR1 package in uh, 1970, so when the ZR1 package came out, it was pretty much the same kind of tweaks to the car, but instead of having the L88 427, it had the LT1 350 engine, which made 370 horsepower. So it went small block, but it still went uh, a racing package. And it was kind of an interesting package as how it was done, because it was pretty much a full-on racing car. And uh, very rare. They came out in 70, and they actually made them in 70, 71, and 72, but super rare. There were only like 25 cars made in 1970. 71 there were like eight cars and 72 there was another 20 cars so the first segment of zr1s there was only 53 cars made um and even the l88s were rare but not that rare and then the zr1 nameplate kind of disappeared it really didn't have any badges or anything that told you it was a zr1 but that was the first gens the c3 zr1 and then the package was gone you didn't hear about it until 1990, well, kind of 89, that came out with the ZR1 package on top of the C4 Corvette. And that literally doubled the price of the Corvette. And you got an LT5 engine that made 405 horsepower. And that lasted until about 95. And then the package was gone again until this car came out, which was the, uh, the first concept was the Blue Devil. And it had this LS9 that made three or 630 horsepower, I believe it was, but it was coupe only. I actually built this one as a convertible, kind of out of fun. I built the coupe, but the ZR1 package debuted. It was, I believe, officially 2009 offering all the way until 2013 to where the C6 ended. And then C7, it came back out again. It came out in 2019. Uh, again, had a little hiatus. But now it was another LT5. It had the same designation LT5 as the C4, but is not the same motor. That's a supercharged 6.2 liter making 755 horsepower with a massive 2.6 liter uh, supercharger on that thing. So that supercharger is, is as big as some, um, uh, when it comes to air volume, as big as some engines that uh, Chevrolet is offering at this time. But, and that was, uh, uh, the last of the front engine Corvettes and of course the the C8 mid-engine uh, the ZR1 is coming out here real soon but um, interestingly the convertible package was not offered on the C4s or even this C6 body style so I had gotten a resin body uh, from uh, Greg Wan he made a resin body and I got I'll show you some photos of that and he cast this piece as separate the whole convertible boot uh, section here the trunk lid so he had cast that separately and then he cast a body with sun visors and uh, gave me the whole thing and I'm like oh cool just kind of have some fun with it since they didn't make a Corvette convertible for the ZR1 in this body style 
And I thought, oh, what would it be like to build one? And I like the, the this body style convertible. I just think with the tribute of the waterfall and everything uh, in the interior, I just think it just looks really, really good. So I have a little bit of fun, build it, and I'm like, I'll build it as the ZR1 because he actually cast the entire ZR1 body um, other than the hood, but I mean the fenders and everything to, you know, ZR1. I'm like, okay, let's have some fun with this and just, uh, you know, since I'm, it's not a factory car, I'll just have some fun with the colors and the striping and go ahead and build it. But, you know, I left the, the kit pretty much everything else alone. There's the... Um, LS9 right there but I painted the red instead of blue which the real one is blue and then of course there's the polycarbonate window that Ravel gives you as well that the real car has and I built it up and just just had some fun with it and um, just you know a little bit of coloring here and just went kind of red white and blue with it too did the hash marks in red and this is all paint and even this nose piece I did in blue that's all paint so I had a little bit of fun with it, but interestingly, when it came to the convertible option, kind of like the L88s of 67, 8, and 9, you could get the full racing package on the Roadster. So same thing with the first ZR1s in 70 through 72. It was available on the convertible package. Now, GM didn't take really good records of exactly how many convertibles they made. They know 53 ZR1s were produced as far as the option package goes, but they didn't quite track the full breakdown, um, and it's roughly 20% of them uh, were convertibles. That's the you know number I'd seen out there. Now a couple of the cars do exist and they've been restored and uh, been through like the Meekum auctions and stuff like that when it comes to the Roadsters for 70 to 72. But like I said, those cars are extremely rare with only 25 1970s, as I mentioned, 871s and another 2072s. But these ones were built in much higher numbers, but the convertible was not offered. There is a yellow one I'd seen, and I got kind of excited, but uh, saw that that was a custom built where a gentleman had actually bought a ZR1 and a regular Corvette convertible and combined the two to create um, this one. But this one, there was a lot of carbon fiber and a lot of aluminum in the body. So that's why they didn't build it as a convertible, as some of the structural, uh, because of the power and everything. So that's why they did that. And interestingly, the C4, I don't know why they really didn't offer a convertible on that. Even though there is one, at least one, C4 ZR1 that's a Callaway Speedster with the twin turbos. Uh, that car has been through the Barrett and Jackson auction and there's some... Uh, info on that car and and I think it's the only one made that way and another one is just kind of a a, a one-off oddball that's really cool but you know I, I had a lot of fun building this and just enjoying it but I had a couple of issues with the resin body where some things just didn't quite line up and there was some shifting in in there so I was having trouble getting the chassis to fit and I've had that with a few of them I, I mentioned that on uh, a couple of the other ones that I built where the resin bodies were just a, a lot of work. So I just took the Ravel body, cut the roof off, and cut all along this trunk line, just right here. And then that just took all of the, the coupe parts off and then just glued this plug in. And then all I had to do is just paint everything. And everything else pretty much just lined right up. So I swapped the sun visors over and, and swapped this in there and just used the Ravel kit body and it became a pretty easy uh, kit to build and just had a whole lot of fun doing it and then since uh, you know the ZR1 the calipers are blue I decided to do those red kind of like I did the red on here but did the carbon brakes um, the black wheels and then detailed out the underside of the whole chassis just just the way the the kit tells you to and I added the carbon fiber decals to here um, and the front splitter which those are are not provided in Ravel's kit but, um, you know, and I really enjoyed this particular kit from Ravel. And it's become kind of hard to find lately. But I remember when it first came out, I, I loved the car. I pre-ordered the kit. When I got the kit in my hands, I built the blue one, which I had featured on the channel. And literally got, got the kit, opened the box, and I had the, the whole model kit built in two weeks. And for me, that I don't do that normally. 
I buy a kit, I build in my mind, but actually building the kit that fast. And then this one's kind of the same way. It's like I got the convertible resin body and you know picked up a whole nother kit because at the time they were readily available. Picked up a whole nother kit and then built this one and just uh, had a really good time with it and just enjoyed it. And after that, it's like, all right, now they're now they're a bit hard to find. I do have one more of that kit unbuilt. And, you know, I, I, I know I'm going to throw the box art in, in this footage, but uh, it, it's just a really good kit. And these Ravel ones, they build up really, really nice. I just uh, hope that they get some more of the, the higher optioned uh, C8 Corvette comes out in kit form. I'd love to see that. And even some of the C7s that are available in the ZR1 package, I would love to see a kit of that. But um, this is really, this particular body style um, is really the only ZR1 I've actually built. I've got a 95 kit to build ZR1, and I've got a 1970. AMT actually did the 1970 ZR1 uh, kit, which, you know, there's really not a whole lot different um, between the kit and, and the car. So it's really easy to build, and it comes with some rally wheels without center caps. But it's a neat kit, and I don't know why I haven't built that, but I've got so many Corvette kits to build even though I built a, a bunch of them and you know I kind of enjoy Corvettes and their history so that's one of the things with this one and I'll show you that engine again one last time there but it's just a great motor this LS motor in there and you know the kit builds up really nice even though it's kind of hidden but it's great for transplanting in other cars too and I think that's what's going to happen with the, the other kit I have is it's going to donate its wheels and engines to something since I've already built two of them in a stock configuration. So I figured I would show this one to you and see if you enjoy it. My newer kits don't seem to do quite as well as the, the most car ones, but that's my main targeted audience anyway. So thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments. I really appreciate it. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next Saturday.